What is going on ladies and gentlemen? And if you're like me, you've already hit level 70, level 80 on a couple of characters and you're like, yeah, what now? So you think about, hey, let's hop into some PvP. But you don't know where to start. You don't know what stats you should be looking for, what gears you should be using, what skills you should be running. Do I have to change my Paragon board? Do the skills interact the same? What are these vendors all about? How does this work? Don't worry, it's a little overwhelming, but I'm going to explain everything you need to know in this video. So I'm gonna stop yakking, let's hop into it. Welcome back guys and before we continue I'm gonna have to politely ask you to hit the like and sub button because we are going to be pumping out a lot of D4 content builds guys literally everything you want to know is going to be here on this channel so if you want to be notified of that content you guys know what to do. So you may ask yourself why would I even want a PvP anyway well besides a massing of collection of severed ears from your fallen foes which I uh, found that I have a knack for it. I think it might be a little bit of a fetish actually I have, have a whole stash collection of ears I might have a problem um, uh, these actually don't do anything and anyway we're getting out getting out track so the reason you want a pvp well first of all you get some badass cosmetics i uh, get them for pretty much all your armor now i would not say this is the absolute best looking armor in the game but when people see this on you uh they know what's up you can get mounts as well let's go over the basics essentially there are a couple of pvp zones if you hit and pull up your map there's a couple of pvp zones in which you can enter now the whole reason you here is to get seeds of hatred which you can refine into this currency called red dust now the red dust is what you want to show at these vendors for cosmetics and then some other buffs i'll go over that here in just a moment so this is a pve pvp type of game so while you're out here you're doing your thing you do not have to flag yourself for pvp so if you hold e go to your scroll wheel you can actually mark yourself for blood when you mark yourself for blood you can attack and also be attacked by anyone else so if you don't necessarily want pvp you just want to go out and get your seeds of hatreds you can refine them into red dust to get your cosmetics that's perfectly fine but what one is that let's be real so you'll have these areas and essentially you'll go out and farm npcs or or players and players are a lot more fun to farm you get a lot of hate mail <laughs> but essentially once you have a uh, amalgamation of red dust you will go to these nodes uh, called altars of extraction and you'll start this little ritual and you just have to survive for like a minute and then once you survive for like a minute you extract and kind of like a tarkov shooter or like dark and darker you extract with the loot and you're good but the thing is when you start channeling these altars of extractions everyone can see you on the map here's a very very good example here ritual in progress people will just flock to this area and just kill who is over there and take their dust so you need to be wary of that also if you are on a kill streak you pretty much become a world boss there is a marker on the map which will follow you around i think if you kill 10 or more people saying hey this dude has a lot of dust go kill his ass so that's what you're going to do you're going to get your homies you're going to go and you're going to zerg him down all right so that is kind of pvp in a nutshell and why you should be doing it it's just a lot of fun and um, there are some other nuances we're going to go into uh, for example these debuffs here on the bar you actually have uh uh, certain buffs that are applied in these pvp zones uh, for example your minions uh, take a, a lot more damage crowd control duration is uh, reduced uh, poison you know potion potion drop rate damage over time is increased think about damage over time especially with the rogue if you step in the rogue trap you're screwed because it kind of bypasses the whole pvp mitigation system you take a look at your stat sheet here i'm trying not to get too technical um with you guys but essentially when it comes down to your damage reductions uh they're, they're poisons for whatever kind of ignore this so when you step in rogue's trap your your health just kind of drops to like nothing with poison effects so uh, that's really annoying but that, that, that's some advanced mechanics but we'll talk about it in like a build video or something later but essentially you do have these buffs here now when it comes to your consumables now there a lot of people don't know that you can stack consumables and um, for example you have these scrolls which you can also buy with your red dust a lot of people don't know about that is going to give you a small damage boost or damage mitigation uh, for about 20 seconds these are complete game changers if you have a lot of dust and you think someone's about to zerg you during like an altar of extraction or whatever you want to pop one of these that's going to give you the, the the damage mitigation there are damage mitigation ones uh, and there's also damage addition ones and one thing to note that your elixirs as well as your incense will stack a lot of people don't know you can craft these incenses at the uh, alchemical vendors so some of these are actually pretty powerful for example uh this song of the mountain increases your armor by 200 for every nearby player now this isn't just you this isn't just your party this is literally every single player and armor which we will discuss here in just a moment is a very very stat dense and absolute w of a stat to have on literally any build so don't forget you can stack your consumables okay so for example i'm gonna craft one of these songs of the mountain i'm just gonna completely waste my mats you're gonna take an elixir and then you're also gonna pop an incense and all of these carry over into pvp 
And before we get into all the stat rolls and the gear you should be looking for and the skills you should be using, um, you need to understand that you are considered a quote unquote elite enemy. So any passives, any paragon board, any damage mitigation, any damage amplification that applies to an elite person, you are considered an elite person. And we're also going to be talking about status effects. Now, there's a lot of miscommunication, misinformation about status effects. I'm going to direct you guys to a wonderful place to where you will make it very, very clear to what status effects are. For example, if I take a look the sorcerer you would think because if someone is frozen that means that they're stunned right no frozen is frozen stunned to stun so this is one of the best resources you can have this is provided by mobilytics i will leave a link to this down in the description just so you guys have access to it this explains what all the status effects and keywords are for example we will go back over the stun slash freezing to boggle so stun by tooltip says causes its targets to be unable to move use a skill or attack all right so we're gonna go take a look at frozen all right where i can find frozen here my hey, chill or frozen here we go so frozen if you repeatedly chill target they will freeze them when frozen targets cannot attack or move to me that sounds the exact same thing no they're completely different frozen they're they're glowing blue and if they stun they got this little icon on it yeah it actually also has the little icons to tell you when someone's immune for example when someone's fortified these are really really handy to know burning poison barrier these are really really important to know because if you're taking a look at your opponent and you see this immune effect on them you're not gonna be able to crowd control them literally at all okay so just keep that in mind when you're pvp Okay, so let's take a moment to kind of take a look at the gear. Now, this is applicable from PvE, right? So pretty much all these stats and all the knowledge that you have from PvE are going to carry over into PvP. I just want to reaffirm what you guys should already know. I mean, you're level 80, you should know this stuff anyway. So let's take a look, for example, this is going to be like how to maximize your damage, how to maximize your quote unquote buckets. Now, I am on a sorcerer, so some of these will apply to me and not necessarily other classes. But when it comes to maximizing your damage, the only thing you are caring about the only thing you care about is burst okay crit damage vulnerable damage crit chance core skill abilities in my case since i'm a sorcerer so the reason i'm saying this is because let's take a look at this weapon right here so you may see okay i have 29 percent uh, core damage damage close enemies close enemies is a very important stat to have because it can roll with a higher bucket what do i mean by bucket so a bucket is the highest potential it's it, it's how tall things are for example we got some vitamins here and a cup which do you think contains more volume right this 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 energy drink definitely contains more volume uh not sponsored by the way but this this is this is delicious this this these ghost drink and energy drinks are, are, are freaking phenomenal anyway when you take a look at your stats the stats kind of also act like that um damage close enemies can roll very very high you see here on the tooltip is 35.3 percent extra damage to quote unquote close enemies close enemies are what's in melee range also covered in that link i showed you guys previously now take a look at the damage to burning enemies the cap on that is only 21 percent so ideally this is not the best in slot role for my class ideally i will want core skill damage i will want damage to close enemies critical damage and vulnerable damage see vulnerable damage is going to roll really high very similar to close enemies around 35 34 percent don't quote me on that it's very very high take a look at burning it can only roll at 21 percent cap so effectively if i had vulnerable on this it would be a lot better because that would be a about a 10 percent overall damage increase on my abilities and since I'm a sorcerer, everyone's vulnerable anyway, so it would just be best for my class. So it's important to keep track of all this on your gear. So the next thing you may ask yourself, oh, okay, well, what 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 stats roll and what gear? What should I be looking for? And well, let me direct your attention to this website. So this is really, really good. So this is Diablo 4 Gear Fixes. Don't worry, I will leave a link to this website down in the description below just so you guys have access to it. This is an invaluable resource. So if you are unsure on what stats drop on what gear for your class, it's very, very simple. I'm a sorcerer for example and you just kind of browse through this it's like okay on my gloves all classes now this can drop for all classes all these stats here lucky you know lucky hit chance um you know increased critical strike willpower but it can also drop sorcerer specific traits for example you have rings of fireball you have rings of charge bolts fire damage over time so this is a really good and valuable resource to have if you're confused or you just will look something up really fast and again the link to this website is down in the description below now, when it comes to your gear, there are a few universal W's on pretty much any class. I would argue crit damage is a universal W to have. 
You will want vulnerable damage for most classes anyway. You will want total percent armor. Now, take a look at this helmet. I, that, that seems very underwhelming. You're like, hey, Horcrux, you're clothy, you're squishy. Why do you care about armor? Armor is one of the most stat dense stats that you can possibly have in this game. It reduces literally everything that happens to you. And having a total percent armor is going to help a lot with damage reduction. For example, this one's only 9.2%. I wish I had the 10.9% rule. So if you find any pieces that has a total armor percentage node on it, 100% go for that. And if you don't know what, what gear can drop that, well, go back to the, the resource i just showed you guys there, there, there's a few I, I this gear is not perfect by no means i'm still converting a lot of my pve gear over to pvp gear and it's actually not that bad of a transition there's just a few stats you need to look out for so some other stats that you definitely need to look out for i'm on the sorcerer i got a max roll of um, 27 magic and this is going to help me with my paragon board so i don't actually have to use the paragon boards to get the higher max and magic pool since this is a frost shard build if any of you frosty boys are out there you understand that you need a high max magic pool you need a really high lucky hit chance in order to keep your engine running so this for me is really really good on the build speaking of build i will have this pvp build listed here in the next couple of days or so i'm just trying to get some really nice 1vx clips and try to round out my gear a little bit better before i present that to you guys because i want it to be the best build it can possibly be Another invaluable note to have is dodge chance. I actually don't have any dodge chance on this build because this is my PVE build. I have yet to come across a really good role that has dodge chance for me. Dodge chance, pretty much what it says, it dodges literally everything besides dots, okay? Any direct damage, it can potentially just completely negate. It doesn't matter if you have a word up, it doesn't matter if you're fortified, whatever, it doesn't matter. Dodge chance is an absolute huge W for any PVP build. And a few more stats just to name off if you have any offensive or defensive stats that is going to allow you to do increased damage to close enemies or decreased damage from close enemies definitely have those because more than likely nine times out of ten you're going to be face to face on your opponent it doesn't even matter if you're a sorcerer you're going to have to face same people anyway so having the damage reduction from close enemies is absolutely invaluable also the more unstoppable abilities you can have is an absolute must you have to have so much unstoppable on the build for example the sorcerer actually has some aspects that you can put on your gear to make your ice armor unstoppable so if we take a look at my gear i have a lot of ways of being unstoppable Technically, my ice, ice armor is going to make me unstoppable. Deep freeze is going to cleanse any debuffs and make me immune. Flame shield is going to make me completely unstoppable. When I take a look at my enchantments, if I have the flame shield thing, this is going to save me from death, and then it's going to make me unstoppable. So if you can burn your opponent's unstoppable abilities and freeze them, I mean, this is pertaining to the, the, the ice orc. If you freeze your opponent, they're, they're, they're just like instantly dead anyway. So it is very important to have some sort of crowd control breakthrough, you know, unstoppable. And that leads me into my next point. Since a lot of people are going to be running unstoppable this aspect is absolutely invaluable you have to have this on your build somewhere okay so check it out you have a 20 percent increased crowd control duration yeah 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 who cares who cares whatever but while enemies are unstoppable you deal a maximum of 50 percent increased damage to them now this is just on the helmet i think you can potentially put this on your like a two-handed weapon and you could effectively be doing 100 percent increased damage to your opponent while they're unstoppable so if you don't have this aspect i highly suggest you go farm it out and have a few on hand any aspects that you have that is going to give you a barrier is pretty much a universal w because quite frankly once your fortified runs out once your barriers run out if your opponent gets to your health bar you are going to pop like a zit there's no if ands or buts about it so the idea is to prevent them to get into your health bar now the good thing about barriers all of your resistances and all your damage mitigation applies to your barrier fortified so a lot, what a lot of the barbarians are doing and there's only a couple barbarian builds out there they'll get like a max fortified then they'll pop a barrier so their barrier will actually protect their fortified just so they can keep all their buffs up so barriers are always a safe way to go also movement speed is pretty huge i'm not gonna lie to you guys and uh, let's also talk about the uh, intrinsic trait on some of the boots so i do have uh, this is pennant and grease anyone can get these essentially is going to leave a trail of frost it's going to chill your opponents chill is a subcategory 
of crowd control so a stun so it's freezing so you have an umbrella of crowd control right and then you have like all the little branching areas you know like chilled slowed stun you know charm you know whatever they're, they're, there's amalgamation of, of crowd control effects but, but anyway movement speed is an absolute w sometimes you gotta use your terrain to your advantage as well that's why the source is really good because you can actually teleport up and down mountains if someone wants to kind of jump on you also one thing i want to talk about is the dodges dodges are actually you you want boots if you can that is going to give you charges of dodges the reason you want that is because you do get some invulnerability frames during your dodge so if you can time them very very well you can mitigate huge amounts of damage like like most builds that i've come across that, that that's actually killed me are like one shot builds so if you have like a really high dodge chance in general or if you can time your dash and get those iframes right when the ability hits you're going to completely negate their entire build and they're screwed so having max dodge charges is invaluable in my opinion and one last thing i want to talk about if you are not above level 90 i highly suggest that you go pvp in tier 3 okay it is going to scale you down to to the tier 3 cap just so no one is like absurdly overtuned or overpowered okay if you're a world tier 4 i highly suggest you be level 90 plus because the paragon boards and all the bonuses that you get like from, from, from 90 plus really some builds really really pop off in those last 10 paragon boards so if you're not at level 100 or, or whatever stay away from world tier 4 you're going to get absolutely one shot by like auto attacks is actually kind of ridiculous so right now i'm having the most fun in tier 3 pvp i think that is the most balanced everyone is kind of scaled down and you just have a lot better fives and it's a lot more fun well guys that's about all there is to pvp i tried to keep it nice short sweet and simple and if you have any questions at all just leave me a comment i literally read every single comment that is posted on my channel of god rest my soul okay and if you want to chit chat with me in the discord i also do have a link to my discord so we have like a thousand people in there and very very helpful we have a lot of diablo 4 and a lot of mmo fanboys in there so if you have questions about anything i'm sure someone will be able to answer it for you i also try stream i try stream on kick twitch and youtube so i do stream four or five times a week so if you want to catch me live you know what to do all right so with all that being said guys a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members who continue to support me you guys are absolutely amazing the bees knees toast my goats the bomb.com all right i'm out peace